welcome to this mini-series. Today we're going to discuss a really great A-star essay scored 23 out of 25, marked by a really great examiner. And you can see the feedback there, and I'll be linking to the feedback in this video. I'm going to guide you today with what this student did really well. And in another video, we're going to see how we could cut this video down because this student's essay is a little bit long and the examiner has commented on that. So we'll see that in the next series. For this one, here's the introduction. The examiner says, excellent introduction, well-structured and written, sophisticated with use of evidence. In terms of their strategy, what have they done? This first section here, it defines the gender pay gap and it applies it that it could be defined for full-time workers, part-time workers. So that's really accurate. They've gone yeah, you know, they've got them above what they need to, they haven't just defined what the gender pay gap is, they've talked about how it could be for full time, part time, so that already shows a little bit deeper knowledge and starts to communicate to the examiner, hey, this is somebody who really knows their stuff. The next bit I thought was really great, so in this next section, they apply their interpretation of the question and, and uh, so they're thinking, okay, the government wants to reduce the gender pay gap, therefore this must be talking about market failure. And they've done that really great thing where they've linked gender pay gap to market failure and the angle they're doing that is by talking about discrimination and biases leading to inequality and, and leading to some kind of allocative inefficiency where the wrong kinds of people are in the jobs or the, the right kinds of people are not in the right jobs. Here they've also got some supporting facts to support the overall idea of how significant that gender pay gap is and they've made it very clear that, that that kind of should should be illegal so something else is going on behind the scenes in theory at the end this bit here something really nice to see in an introduction i mean we've discussed how the introduction doesn't get you any marks but say you wanted to do one this is really nice for the reader it clues them up on what you are going to say in the rest of the essay so they just you know, they don't have to worry about anything. They don't really have to think about what is this? <laughs> What's the student doing? So overall, lots of definitions apply to the question. They have a fact and they've introduced, like, <laughs> they've introduced the arguments to come. And that makes a really well-structured, written, sophisticated essay with use of evidence. Again, in a time condition situation, you'll see kind of my personal interpretation of personally what I would do to cut this down but the introduction itself doesn't get you any marks. The next paragraph, this is their first point, their first policy to reduce a gender pay, pay gap is discrimination. They state their point here. Now, I usually recommend to start this at the beginning. They've written it a little bit further down, but their policy is really clear. And here's the feedback from the examiner. Well-developed analysis supported by use of examples. Evaluation is developed, a well-structured paragraph with an overall reason judgment, which revisits the question again. This ensures the answer is focused. So they've got a focused answer with well-developed analysis with examples. And the examiner has written that, saying that they, they like that. So with this policy, in blue, I've got all the analysis that they did. So this was all the explanation that they did. They went step by step guiding the reader through how the compulsory recruitment training could help to reduce the gender pay gap. And you can see it's a lot of detail. They're using really advanced theory. This is something that you'll see in the top based star essays. Not only do they go in depth with many chains of reasoning, but they're able to select the best kinds of points that allows them to show off their knowledge. They've also got consistent use of facts. So they've said that Females are less likely to be interviewed on average than men. And it links it back to the gender pay gap. So it's still really explaining exactly what they had said in the beginning. What they had said in the beginning was that the recruitment training could overcome the gender pay gap. So they've got their point. Everything's explaining that, that point, And they've even got facts to support that. Plus the arguments that they've chosen are really high level and show a lot of skill and economics abilities. Their evaluation of that same point is the next paragraph. Here's the feedback. It says a well-structured paragraph with an overall reason judgment, which revisits the question again. 
This ensures the answer is focused. So examiner loves the focus here. This uh, student was struggling a little bit with picking their right evaluation points all the time, but uh, they, they, they've, they really got around that by just stating really clearly that they're questioning the previous point and that helps them kind of enter the evaluation game. So they've said, however, compulsory recruitment training may not be may not significantly help to increase the value that employers pe pl place on female staff and therefore will not have a huge effect on the average wages that females earn. And then they've given their reason why. This is because a lot of promotion decisions are decided by bosses. So they've got clear questioning to their previous point and they've got a valid idea to suggest why that might not be the case. The next step that they do is they explain why it's important to consider that bosses would be the ones making some of the promotion decisions. So they're saying that if females just get through the door, but they are not getting promoted because other more senior staff haven't had the, the unconscious bias training, then that's going to mean that uh, the gender pay gap won't be reduced effectively. So they've, they've uh, questioned their point, explained that a little bit, linked it to how it might change their conclusions on the gender pay gap. But next, they work on forming a really kind of accurate, cool judgment about how the gender pay gap should actually in general decrease, even if the uh, bosses in general uh, are not involved in the training. And the reasoning that they're given is that it's more important that females get through the door and so long as they're there for a long term position, the theory is that they will be able to communicate accurately their true ability. So what matters most is that they get through through the door. That's their reasoning. So they formed their judgment. They supported it with their reasoning. And that's their evaluation. The next policy is uh, this green one. So mini compulsory introduction courses for A level subjects. And as a background, they suggested this because in the data that they researched, A level choice differs a lot between females and males. And as a result of that, they are expecting that that will lead to different career choices and therefore different salaries that those careers would pay and therefore the gender pay gap. So that's a, that's a, that, that shows an immense amount of knowledge on what could be driving the gender pay gap. And you can see that this paragraph is, is super great. It's gone in lots of depth, so many chains of reasoning explaining how the compulsory courses for A-levels may help to reduce the gender pay gap. All of those blue bits are explaining the green point, are explaining how the policy will reduce the gender pay gap. And here's what the examiner said. Good use of examples with extended and developed chains of reasoning Basic use of the diagram, try to label specific points on the diagram to help explain the point made. Okay. All they're doing is illustrating the difference in the MRP. I'm, I'm guessing the examiner was expecting a slightly different graph uh, from an, an A star student, something a little bit more complicated. So that could be something to work on. Okay, here is the next paragraph, the evaluation. The examiner is saying, very long-winded way of making a simple point. Try to write this in time conditions and see how to be more concise. So we'll look at that in the next video. What is the point in this, in this paragraph? The idea is that uh, students' minds could be made up even by the A-level. And as a result, you can give them this compulsory training, but they, they already know what they want to do. So it's not going to work very well. So the examiner felt that could be summarized a little bit more to cut down on time. The important thing when you evaluate is, is you question the same point. So you question that the gender pay gap would be reduced by the introduction courses, but you ultimately need to make a judgment as to what extent that would actually work. And you can do that quite quickly. You don't have to explain that in a lot of detail. That's more of an analysis skill, but the Evaluation skill is just asking, can you critique, can you form judgments, can you weigh up the costs and the benefits? So the really important bit is, is probably this yellow bit and, and um, I'll show you in the cut down version something that could be done for that one.
Okay, and final paragraph. The policy just suggested here was a 40% gender quota for board executives. And the reasoning they're giving is because females only take up 20% of the average. So they're suggesting that as a result, the, fem the average female wage will be pulled down because of the lack of representation in these higher paid jobs. And once they've suggested their point, again, they explain that it's, it's the focus of their entire paragraph. Something that I love about this essay, it's very clear, very easy to read. Everything is, is, is clear from the start, what they're going to do for the rest of the paragraph. And they stick to that. Here is what the examiner said. Again, good analysis with a well-structured paragraph. The diagram is used only illustrative. One thing that I really loved about this paragraph is that it went into some, some uh, very deep consequences. So not only is this policy going to hire more people at the, at the more senior level, this person is arguing that as a result, some knock-on effects might happen. So these, these uh, females hired at this higher level will have more of decision-making capabilities and they can start executing certain changes in the corporate image and the types of biases and of course kind of a trickle down effect so that thought that was really thoughtful really in depth and it's just one of those second order consequences that most people wouldn't think of getting to and again they've linked that to the gender pay gap so everything's explaining the, the question with the evaluation the examiner has said some thoughtful considerations made here so they are saying that these quotas they sound good but there could be some serious uh, ways that it might not reduce the gender pay gap and they're saying that potentially if the wrong kinds of females are hired because workplaces are just worried about getting more females and, and, and don't necessarily mind whether those females are as well qualified as, as they would expect that could help reinforce some of the negative uh, beliefs that, that workplaces may have about how the female gender may be less productive or, or less efficient in the workplace and so the students saying some there are some serious downsides to possibly doing that uh, as a result uh, that you know they're suggesting that possibly this policy could actually cause some harm especially even to the gender pay gap attempts to 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 reduce that but then they're also saying it's not very likely. They're saying, well, you can know how, how well qualified somebody is, is, is for the job by interviewing them, by looking at their CV, going through all the standard procedures. So according to the student, it shouldn't be much of an issue. And I think that's really well supported from what they've, they've said. And they've reached this conclusion that overall, this quota should probably help to reduce the gender pay gap. They're saying overall, it's unlikely that the wrong kinds of workers will be hired for, for the jobs. And uh, most likely it will have a positive effect at helping get the right kinds of females in, into these jobs. The conclusion, in terms of the, the structure, the first chunk here is a summary of what they have just said. Now this could be beneficial in the context that it could help you uh, kind of remember <laughs> what you've said in your essay and kind of refresh all the ideas. You know, it could be 30 minutes since you've written part of the essay could be worth to refresh the ideas and collect your thoughts but this is very long this could be something that we could cut down and I'll show you in, in the next video how, how that could be transformed the, the main conclusion happens when it's not the summary something that hasn't been done before in the essay which is the idea that okay so I think the policies that will work are going to be this and they've said that the compulsory training I think is going to be very unique in its benefits to help get more females employed and specifically more senior females rising through the corporate ladder. They're saying that possibly this, this, this could have some negative effects, that there could be a, a male gender pay gap emerging with some of these, so they're weighing up some of the benefits and the costs. And overall, their judgment is that this gender pay gap will be reduced by, by these policies, but it will be more effective to the senior female uh, level. And additional policies to the ones discussed should help uh, the, the low skilled females and that's suggested and something that, that is okay to do that you can suggest that I haven't discussed these policies but I know there's room to, to discuss and talk about these other policies that haven't been discussed so 
this is evaluative because this weighs up the costs and the benefits, forms a judgment, and here's what the examiner said. Overall, this is a very well written essay which addresses the issues that are relevant to the question. It is focused on the questions, although at times repetitive and worded in an elongated way, when the same could be said in fewer words. It is important that the candidate is able to reproduce this in time conditions. The conclusion is a summary of what has already been exhausted, exhaustively dis discussed, which is a shame as it will not be awarded any further marks. The conclusion begins two thirds down the way through this paragraph. This would be a top level response, 23 out of 25. Hope that was really useful to you. Hopefully you've seen kind of what an A star essay looks like. And also you see that, hey, there are things that you could even improve even in A star essays. And that's okay. So we're all kind of learning and, and learning kind of from all these experiences. So click the next video to see what I suggest might be cut down in this essay whilst hopefully not affecting the grade in a negative way too much. Okay, so take care. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>